This is the all new generation of the BMW X1. Is it now one of the best compact premium SUVs overall? Let's find out here with Thomas and Autogefühl in 4K, full screen and full length. Let's go. The new styling in the front here with really large double kidney look. Wow, really impressive already here for their small SUV. And also here these contrasting vertical fins. The air intake on the inside is adaptive. And you can see the new LED lamps. These ones here, the optional adaptive LED lamps. And then they also have a modern daytime running light signature. In the lower part, it really depends on which version you pick. This one here with the M Sport. Other than that, the X-Line, for example, would have the contrasting lower part in silver. And the turning indicators here replace the front data running light. Looks really fancy, doesn't it? The length at 4 meters 50 or 177 inches, so around about 5 centimeters or 2 inches longer than the previous generation. And wheels from 17 to 20 inch. These here are 18 inch, but with winter tires, so they look a little bit more balloonish. You can get a more you know, like a cooler or more aggressive look with summer tires and also bigger wheels, but then you might also lose some comfort if you go too big. Talking about the comfort as for suspension, next to the base suspension, you can also get an adaptive M suspension, which we have here today. And that is then 15 millimeters lower or 0.6 inches lower. However, you can also adapt the comfort depending on the driving mode. Frames around the windows, it always depends on which version you pick and if you go for a shadow line or not and so on. You really have to go deep into the configurator because there are different possibilities. And here also with the high gloss and in the lower part. Overall, a very likable design, not too aggressive. Also painted wheel arches here in the vehicle color in the M Sport. However, you can also get it in a more contrasting look with the X-Line. In the rear with a more modern tail lamp design here and the M Sport has these dark inserts right here. The color, by the way, is Storm Bay Metallic, a very interesting one. It really changes the nuances of the color depending on the light. Also in this M Sport, we have here these you know, diffuser style lower endings, really cool. And there are no fake exhaust tips whatsoever. So a great clean design choice. No work for the Autogefühl fake exhaust police for today at least. Then in this new generation, it also comes with wider track. So that gives a better stance on the road and also promises better driving feeling. We'll see more about that later. And turning indicators in the rear, well, hmm, they don't look that spectacular, do they? The car key is extremely light indeed. As here also in the M Sport, the beautiful colors. Then flush door handles here, they always stay like this and they fold up like this. And I mean, the feedback is not too bad. Then door closing sound is actually quite good. Not too bad, but also not the best ones we've heard. Inside of the doors, here with soft touch sensor tech, you can also get that one as well as for the dashboard. And here the Harman Kardon sound system with a nice design visualization. And also the buttons at the inside of the doors resonates a very good quality indeed. Here the M Sport steering wheel looks more spectacular, especially in here in that lower area. That's pretty cool. And still real buttons at the steering wheel. That's what we really prefer, don't we? Depending on the market, you'd start with fabric seats as base. Then the M Sport comes usually with Alcantara on the inside, Sensatec outside, and here these ones are the full perforated Sensatec seats. So they're breathable and full leatherette, make a very good quality impression from the first side. And indeed, great comfort here from the surface. It's really soft, good quality, and also the seat ergonomics, they have improved it here in the new generation, and they hold you really tight as well without being too narrow. So well done. Here the steering wheel, manually up and down, in and out, very smooth process. And with 189 or 602, I still have enough headroom left, although this one here is equipped with the panoramic roof. You can also open that one, and there's also a shade to make it darker. Interior overview, revolutionary change, completely different. Nice styling right here and also with the integration of the ambient lighting. Sensatec dashboard is an option that feels really nicely. And then the screen is like one curved display. The left side 10.25 inch, right side 10.7 inch. But the naming is strange. This one is called control display and this one is called info display. Shouldn't be the other way around as for the naming. 
I don't really get it. Well, let's call it instruments and infotainment. That's how we call it here. The steam wheel also has a great design here, doesn't it? And also the lower part is very interesting, but let's first take a look at the infotainment. Because this is here BMW OS 8 now, it has more functionality, it's not as easy to control as the old one. You get used to it bit by bit. For example, here interior lighting you can control right here, the ambient lighting. Then you can also pick the different colors right here and they change accordingly here, for example. So that looks actually very fancy indeed. The home menu is either like this or there's another home menu uh, when you press it here then for the whole vehicle overview and some hotkeys here on the left side for example also to the car internal GPS and it's actually quite responsive. What is essential actually in the OS 8 and also a big advantage is that the integration of the Apple CarPlay Android Auto right here it is more consistent. So this wireless connection only at BMW, now it is more stable in the OS 8. And the Harman Kardon sound system actually does a very nice job here in this like, segment here. Very nice one indeed. Just this climate unit here, it is always in the screen. That's not to my liking, at least it always stays in this position. And this is the whole climate menu where you can also, for example, activate the steering wheel heating or the seat heating. And you can also deactivate or activate the AC now. So this has been upgraded from the very early version. And the rear view camera, well, does the job definitely not bad. Resolution maybe could be a little bit better, but it's also quite dark now outside. And what's also cool here, in the CarPlay mode, you can have Apple Maps also on the left side in the instruments or with Android Auto, it would work with Google Maps. These two possibilities. Digital instruments, you can see here the RPMs can turn up in the right side. You can also change the whole layout of that. For example, here, like this, or like this, but I more prefer the layout where you can still see the RPM, it's more classic layout. And then also content-wise, you can, for example, also have you know, this compass here, but you can also induce the speed here in the middle part. That's what I would actually use for driving. And the head-up display, very clear and crisp to read, a helpful feature. And do you see this flying middle console? This is taken over from the BMW iX, from the big EV SUV. So some styling elements then also in their compact premium SUV. But is it also functional? Well, in a way, because there's a lot of storage space then underneath. Here in the lower middle console, it's very interesting, you have this kind of seat belt here for your smartphone, that way you can secure it so it doesn't fly all over the place while driving. And when I take it out, you can see actually you have these holes back there and they suck away the hot hair, hot hair, <laughs> okay, hot air from the inductive charging pad at the smartphone so it doesn't overheat. And you have these cup holders, not adaptive though, that's hit and miss. And here two USB-C chargers. On top of the flying middle console, you start, stop the vehicle. This is here the shifting lever here for drive or sports mode. So I'm going to show you that. Reverse. And then here in the middle part, you have at least still a manual volume jog. That's good to have. And here you pick the driving modes. However, you always have to select them then in the touchscreen. Here, for example, the sport mode to confirm it once again. So not the quickest solution while driving. And finally here the middle console, you open it here and it folds open and you have so much space underneath. Inside of the doors in the rear, this material here is rather hardback, but at least it has some structure. Softer than here for your elbows, beautiful styling from the Harman Kardon sound system. And then you can see here, the rear interior of the new generation, also with the perforation on the rear seats if you went for this very interior. And it's kind of hard back here at the recess, at the back part of the seats. Let's see how that one turns out as for the leg room. Rear seating position, well, as the seat is, I would be driving here, tall person and 189 or six foot two in the back. There is some headroom left, although this is equipped with the panoramic roof, which gives a great view indeed. Wow, and it's so wide here in the, in the, in the rear. It's great for the rear passengers. When you put your knees on the outside, you do hit the seat. On the inside, this recess here helps. So not plenty of space, but in this segment, it's actually kind of average. But the comfort here also on the, um, you know, on the perforated sensor tech here in the back is really good. So good seating ergonomics also for the rear passengers. And you can also change that 
how you want that angle. You can make it more upright, but you can also put it more in the back. And these combustion engine versions, not available for the PHEV or the EV for the IX, here the normal combustion engine version, they can also move the bench forward and back. And that, of course, can make the trunk longer or then here for the maximum leg room. The trunk at 540 up to 1,600 liters, 50 liters more than before. However, you lose it again when you go for the EV or the plug-in hybrid version. And then here the length is about 86 centimeters or 34 inches. And the width here is a good meter of 40 inches. And you can see here the cabin trolley fits in in a vertical way, no problem. However, with the EV and the plug-in hybrid, it's not such a problem because here above that you don't lose too much. It's just what you have underneath. And there we have even more space here in the pure petrol version, for example. The split here is 1-1-1, one, 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 so you can individualize these folding mechanisms. And then you have a total length of about 155 meters or 61 inches. A wide variety of engine choices. That is the current BMW strategy. So here you have two liter four cylinder diesel, a 1.5 liter three cylinder petrol engine, the two liter four cylinder petrol engine we have here. Today is 23i. There's also a more powerful 28i version available in the US. Then there's also a plug-in hybrid drivetrain based on the three-cylinder petrol engine and an all-EV version, the BMW iX1. This one here, the 23i, has an acceleration figure of around 7 seconds. The 28i for the US would be a little bit faster, around 6 seconds in the acceleration figure. And I can already tell you the fuel economy here is less than 7 liters and 1 kilometer, so it's about 35 mpg US and about 45 mpg UK, and the same consumption figure will also more or less count for the 28i. Welcome to Thomas's Driving Lounge, starting here on the German Autobahn with the BMW X1. And we can pick a My Modes Sport Mode, then we have to activate it once again, the infotainment system, not the most practical thing to do. And if you also want the better or sport here shifting, then we turn the shifting lever backwards, and then we also in the S shifting mode. This is in the sport here, set up here for this vehicle, and we start from 45 kilometers an hour and accelerate it out. Let's go. kilometers an hour. This is, by the way, the speed limit just when it's wet. Well, we're doing reasonably quick. Of course, it's not the fastest here overall with this 23i. Around seven seconds in the acceleration figure from zero. And the 28i, which would be the corresponding model in the US with a little bit more power, is second quicker, about six seconds than in the acceleration figure. But they have the same base and then the two liter four cylinder. So acceleration wise, yeah, it's not the quickest one. It's the small X1, the compact SUV, but it feels so great on the Autobahn. We have the adaptive M suspension here. That means when I'm in the sport mode, I have a little bit stiffer feedback from the suspension. The M Sport suspension, again, that adaptive style is also 50 millimeters or 0.6 inch lower. And it just gives me such a great control here on the German Autobahn. Really nice, so flawless suspension setup. So it's stiff enough, sporty enough, but at the same time, it's also comfortable enough and well we have 18 inch winter tires here and they are of course in a way forgiving as for the comfort but at the same time they still feel sporty enough and I'm not sure if you heard that already when I'm using the turning indicators they give you such a great sporty feeling and they're so much fun rarely ever have we had turning indicators that are so much fun like BAM you know like you can really hammer them in that's so awesome I mean it's so much fun to use the turning indicators. Hardly ever have that. From the sound, both, and also from that haptics, you know. So you can also use this tip function that you just tip them and then turning indicators are showing. But here it's really more fun to hammer them in indeed. Let's switch back to the normal personal mode here. Then the suspension giving us a little bit more comfort. 
and we can also for more relaxed shifting so to speak that the gears are not turned up that high and also for more efficiency go back to the D driving mode. Overall you maybe also heard the noise insulation even at higher speeds was superb so great noise insulation worked on that here also in the new generation and also more aerodynamics better wind efficiency and we also heard that in a way that we have less wind turbulences from everything they built uh, on the outside of the vehicle like, like here the side mirrors and so on and that was also one of the plan that the wind efficiency of everything that was attached to the vehicle has been increased and that's of course and also good for, for noise insulation so it really feels so much at home here on the motorway although it's a compact vehicle it also feels so sporty so it feels on the one hand grown up enough that it's all SUV you need at the same time because of the compact size and the comparable to bigger vehicles lower weight it feels so agile talking about agility I have had some chat with the with the engineer that designed the steering input and he said they made it let's say in a way loose and really light to control so the whole car feels lighter to control and yes that does work however it doesn't feel most natural so it feels really fun and sporty to steer that car around yes but then again here in that low degree angle I have a little bit you know yeah, not, not, not enough feedback but then when I'm getting to the outside area of that I have too much so you have to be careful on the motorway then mm -hmm. and I don't share this approach so I would have had more feedback from the vehicle from the steering and tune it towards a more natural driving input I think that is what BMW should stand for the most natural steering input and not the most agile one you know what I mean what's your take on that please share your opinion with me in the comments and then I can uh, take a look at that later on when I'm not driving <laughs> yeah um, okay I can understand the philosophy but once again I don't share this by the way even if you are in the normal driving mode just pin it down and it will also do everything reasonably quick it was like 100 to 140 kilometers now yes it's not the most powerful engine but definitely better than the 1.4 liter three-cylinder in the UK the engine choices are somewhat limited at least at this moment when we produce the, um, this video here so when you want to go ha go have a very quick version you gotta pick the plug-in hybrid or something but we also had experience when you know ask yourself hey diesel petrol plug-in hybrid electric in the driving part where we compared the petrol to the pure electric one the pure electric one is so much fun to drive and is also really powerful the quickest version there is so you can have more driving fun in a way with that on the other hand the petrol engine is lighter so when you are already at speed and do some you know driving agility then this petrol engine version here will feel better especially when you are at speed and then suddenly go into a corner then you can't deny physics with the weight of the electric vehicle then the petrol engine will be the best choice so I think for fun as for handling dynamics the pure petrol engine 23i or then 28i in the US will be the best pick for the most explosive driving fun as for acceleration it will definitely be the ix1 and due to the lower center of gravity it will also still deliver a lot of fun in driving and if you have the charging infrastructure suitable the ix1 is also quite efficient has good range and so on then you might as well go for the ev version otherwise if your charging infrastructure is not up to uh, up yet then the pure petrol engine here is also a very very good choice no, no doubt uh, as for that so I'm really happy with that one especially as for driving dynamics yes steering could be fine-tuned a little bit more that it's stiffer and has more control more natural feeling that's good and then that assistance systems they are also really nicely thought out here activate them at the steering wheel and they're so flawless indeed it's also with an active steering here if you get the highest build of that and you see here it's a very smooth input from the steering wheel that does, does itself you slide left bend on that motorway here and it's doing a flawless job maybe you've already seen the blind spot motor let me show it to you that red Skoda might overtake us now so we can show that so there's a triangle appearing then in the side mirror not sure if you can see that it's there right now early enough and when I set the turning indicators then it's also flashing 
So that is a really helpful function, that blind spot monitor. I also have a head-up display now here in the X1, so I don't have to look down to the instruments. I see all the speed and so on and basic information in the head-up display. It's also a great addition. And lane changes are so much fun with this vehicle. It's awesome. You get a lane along with the steering, yes. Um, then the turning indicators that you can hammer in with that great haptic feedback. Wow. And then the steering, yeah. You can live with it, but it should be better from BMW. That's that's what I'm saying. But driving dynamics wise, it is easily one of the best, if not the best vehicle in this segment here, compact SUVs and especially in here in this premium area. And with the new generation, they've improved again bit by bit by bit in every a single area. The seats are awesome, a great job. They hold you tight with these bolsters here. That is really nicely done. And also the perforated sensor deck, it doesn't get too hot. It's breathable. At the same time, it feels like a good quality. It's soft enough that you have good driving comfort. So it is really astonishing what they could squeeze out of this compact SUV. That's what I really love about that. You don't have a too big vehicle. At the same time, it already delivers you everything you might want to have. So yeah, that is really what I love about this vehicle. And all these different positive aspects always come apparent here on the German Autobahn. That's why we always try to include the German motorway test as strong or as often as possible when we have the cars right here in Germany. As for the suspension, once again, when we're driving a little bit slower here now, that M Sports suspension, adaptive one. So I always say when you have BMWs to pick, either go base suspension or with the adaptive suspension, Never pick an M Sport suspension if it's the fixed one, because that is, I think, just too stiff then. But the adaptive one does a great job. You can have some stiffer sportier driving when you want to have it in the sports mode. Other than that, you have more comfort also in the base driving mode. Or you just save the money and stick with base suspensions. That would also be fine, because at some point, it also gets really expensive with these vehicles, you know. and the X1 is n is a great SUV, but then again, for the size, what it offers, whoa, that is interesting, like the, how it's, um, like the image, the, the mirror here in this Renault Kangoo, you see the big front grille, and then the light on the outside, it's basically, you know, like mirrored right here, so it's like a, wow, that looks cool, interesting, right? Uh, did you know, by the way, maybe some of you guys have seen it, the previous generation BMW 1 Series, that hatch, had a strange curved in back hatch that basically flipped the the mirror image so always when you were standing behind a previous generation bmw one series you could see your car and yourself upside down when you were looking you know like that like situation like this yeah curious fact right <laughs> but definitely fun fact isn't it so here now also in the city very silent you feel very well insulated from the outside world the petrol engine here, this four cylinder, is still giving a nice sound. It is also enhanced here with the sound actuator when you are in the sport mode, especially. So, but I can actually live with that. The thing is, we can argue about that, yes, but at the same time, we feel it's good that the cars are insulated very well. At the same time, then also the engine is insulated, which is one good thing, but then again, we don't hear so much sound. So this enhancement then by the speakers is also somewhat okay, as long as it doesn't sound like totally ridiculous or something. Um, by the way, if you hear this chime here from time to time, it's always when I, you know, there's like 50 kilometers an hour speed limit here, and as soon as I drive 51 or something, was it at 52, let's see, or 53, 54, I don't know, no, no, it's not doing that, but from time to time, this vehicle, uh, does react then on that and giving you the uh, giving you these chimes so um, yeah you can also turn it off but uh, for some situations it might also be useful to have that so this is a good thing here about the BMW X1 it feels very nicely planted on the motorway on the German Autobahn at the same time it also feels at home in the city and you don't feel it's too big or so on also when you're getting in some narrow situations when you park now it was this time at 53. So that is like this, this perfect balance. And also one of the reasons why this is still one of the BMW bestsellers. So 
overall they each year produce and sell like between two and three hundred thousand pieces and this is the reason you know it is a vehicle here that can actually do almost everything feels at home in almost every situation and that's why also i this generation still really like it if you want to see more of the bmw ix1 the ev version we have it here in our review of the x1 versus ix1 or one of the competitors is of course also the mercedes gla